Hi, this is David Valade with Alta Vista Technology, and today I was going to show a little demonstration about the Sage Intact budgeting and planning tool. So built into Sage Intact, we have a lot of options for budgeting, but there are a lot of times where you might consider doing something different, something to give you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more ease of use in setting your budget. I'm a recovering accountant myself, and I know what it's like talking to non-accountants who need to set budgets which is a pretty common scenario in the world today. Like you might be in a organization and you need to have a uh, different department heads set their budget. And these are non-accountants, but they know how to understand dollars and cents. They know how to do a budget. These are smart people, of course, but they don't speak accounting language. And it's very complicated for those individuals a lot of times to have to understand how to navigate an Excel spreadsheet or to know account numbers or to do different types of things like that that we take for granted as being in the accounting world, just the way things are. So we have another option here called the Sage and Deck Budgeting and Planning Tool. And I thought I'd make a budget and just give a little glimpse into how this could work. Here I am in the tool here and there's a lot going on, but I thought let's go through start to finish here. I'm just setting up the very basic budget. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to click this little icon, and I'm going to click Make a New Budget. And the first option that I am confronted with here is how do I want to get the information to help build the budget? Since I am a Sage and Tech subscriber, that's the preferred way. That's the way I recommend uh, proceeding. But if you have other ideas here, if there's other cases that you want to handle, maybe you're using Excel or something differently, uh, that's still an option. But we'll use the, the recommendation here of going with the Sage and Tech data. So click next. I could have multiple environments, so I'm going to go ahead with this uh, demo environment. So I'll hit next here. And now here we go. Let's make a new budget. So let's say here I'm going to do 2020. So I got to give my budget a name. Sure. Okay. Alta Vista Technology 2020. We'll go with that. The next thing it asks here is uh, what kind of company, uh, what kind of budget? Uh, do I have actually company budget is the most common, but you can see I also have a choice here for nonprofit. Nonprofit takes a lot of other uh, dimensions and other considerations into effect. I won't go into that here, so I'm going to leave it as company, and then my date range. And I can have a multi-year budget if I choose to do that, but I'm going to leave it here with my 2020 calendar year, and then I'll hit next. All right, so we do have a few steps to go through in the budget. Now, this is something that the, the administrator of the budget would do. So I do see account numbers. This is okay. Uh, I'm going to go through this here. My end users, if I'm going to actually ask for help down the line, they don't have to see that. They're going to see nice, easy text. So the first thing I can do here is I can take a look and make sure that all of my account numbers are categorized correctly. And this does look correct to me. Uh, the budgeting tool was smart enough to go out and look at everything inside of Sage Intact and make sure that I have everything. Um, it's, it's taking the, the categorization that I already have set up. So it's moving ahead. If there's anything that I need to change, I do have a chance to do that here, but I'm pretty happy with the way things came over. So I'm going to go hit next and proceed. All right, now this is a very important set of uh, decisions I have to make here. What I'm being asked here is, how do I want to set up my budget structure? Let's think about that. Over here on my preview, I can see that I have revenue, cost of goods, operations, and so on. And looking at my live data in my Sage Intact environment, I have 57 lines. So if I want to budget by, for example, sales, I am free to do so. If I want to budget by different, different kinds of... Uh, expenses, I can do that also. And this very well may be what I need to do because what I'm doing here is it's showing me uh, group the revenues, we'll start with that, by account. And that's great. Well, what if in my environment that's not how things work? Let's say in my environment I actually have different locations and I want to budget by each of my locations first, then I'll get into my accounts. So I don't want to budget by sales as a lump sum. I want to budget by sales for every one of my locations. How can I do that? Well, there is this drop down here. So I hit the drop down and I see all the different dimensions that I have in my environment. This might be different for you, but this is just showing all the different things that I have. So in my example, I said I wanted to first budget by location. So I watch what happens when I click that. I'm going to say by location. And oh, now I, I've added many more lines now, of course, because now I'm choosing to budget by, let's say, sales, but sales for Texas as opposed to sales for Maine. It's doing what I told it to do. Uh, it broke everything down and it broke my revenue down by location. 
And I can even get more complicated if I if I need to. I don't want to overcomplicate it, but if this is how my real world is, if I'm budgeting by location, then this is great. This is what I want. Furthermore, though, I could hit plus here and I can add another dimension on my revenue. For example, um, if I have projects, do I want to budget by project? Well, I could. And if I add that, then I now have within Michigan, I have my two projects, my winter and annual. And if we go down to Texas, same idea, same projects there. Because I only have two projects in this environment. I could do that. I could budget by customer. I could budget by vendor. Depending on what sort of uh, requirements I have, I could make a lot of different choices. We'll keep it easy here. So we'll say, I, I do want to budget my revenue by location. I don't care about projects so much right now. So I will leave that alone. And this is looking good. This is what I want to see for my revenues. Let's keep going. I hit next and we're going to expenses. All right. So now same kind of question. I can see all of my expenses down below and I'm being asked, do I want to budget by account? Well, I could do that. But in my pretend world here, let's suppose that I want every department head to actually budget their expenses. That makes more sense to me, right? I want my um, different departments to say what they are uh, planning for repair and maintenance or travel or whatever. So I will, instead of uh, choosing account, I'm going to toggle that. And before I do that, let's take a look at what my preview is showing me. It's saying I currently have 118 different lines here. And I'm going to toggle that and say, you know what? Uh, when it comes to my expenses, let's group those by department. There we go. Instantly, I click on that. Now, under my operational expenses, you see the different departments that I've set up in Sage Intact. So I can see that I have, for example, finance. And now finance can do all of their health insurance, let's say, or whatever. This is looking pretty good. I want to keep going. So I'm going to hit next here. And another great question here, uh, would you like to import your headcount data? So we have headcount data inside of Sage Intact. Do I want to use that? There are so many great options that I can use if I have that information pulled in. So I'm going to say yes. Still a few more steps here. Let's keep going. Um, here I get the ability to merge accounts. This is good. Let's think about this for a minute. Um, as an accountant here, I might want to have some granularity on my accounting. I might want to distinguish between different types of uh, expenses or revenue. But when it comes to budgeting, I might not want to have to force uh, myself to budget down to those very granular uh, pieces, those little fine grain building blocks. And I'll give you an example. I have utilities here. I have utilities, electric, garbage, gas, phone, and water in my little play company. And that works out great because now I can uh, track things. I have good uh, controls. I can watch how things go over time. I don't want to give that up. I like being able to book expenses for utilities to these different little uh, fine-grained accounts. When it comes to budgeting, in my example here, I might not want to budget each of those little uh, different utility expenses. For me, that might just be one lumps number that says utilities. So I want to do that. That's what this is asking me here. So I'm going to be able to click my utilities, for example. I'll click, uh, I don't have to pick all of them. I could pick some of them, but I'm going to, I am going to pick all of them here. And it's asking me what line do I want to make? So I'm going to make a new line on my budgeting called utilities. Tab off that, and there we go. I'm going to hit apply. And there we go. So now I have my utilities. When it comes to budgeting, I'm just going to budget utilities. And I'm going to be able to track my actuals to budget. I'm going to pull my actuals from the individual accounts, but I'll be able to have one lump number for budgeting. This is a great way to simplify things when it comes down to my uh, my budget going forward. Just a few more steps to go, so let's hit next. All right, next thing here is it's asking me if I want to remove any lines. I do have a few lines I like to remove. For example, in this play environment, I actually have an entity here called Entity 5, <laughs> which is uh, some sort of uh, allocation account that we have for playing around here. Uh, I don't want to budget for that. I'm going to hit the big X and wipe out the whole entity. So still there. I'm just not going to budget for it. Next, I'm going to come on down here, and I have a couple Michigan. Let's pretend that I have a few Michigan branches that uh, I no longer operate as that in that way, and they've actually moved around, whatever the, the story might be. I don't want to budget for those, so I'm going to take those off. Great. I could also say if I were to drop down to the bottom here that um, I have a bunch of uh, like income tax, let's say. Now I could just bring these into my budget and choose not to put a number, but if I don't even want to confuse my users about budgeting for income tax for at the federal or state level, I could just um, take those out entirely and they won't even show up. Perfect. This is uh, all great for uh, keeping things easy for my users. So I'm going to hit next. And a few more things here. So uh, dimensions, we love dimensions. Uh, do I want to budget for any of these dimensions? For example, uh, the system that I have right now, I have currently have two uh, projects 
that are being used in my system? Do I want to budget for those or customer or vendor or by item or by product line? I have all these choices here. For me, again, keeping it simple, I'm going to choose not to budget for those, but I could. Uh, so I'm just going to pass on that and say next. And that's it. So I hit finish and, and we've done it. We have a budget all set up, grouped, sorted, filtered, just to my specifications, just the way I want it. And now I get to actually get in and do my budget. And what's so great here is that I have one source of truth. It's the budgeting and planning tool. I don't have different versions of Excel spreadsheets that are flying around. I don't have to burden other users with having to look at account numbers if that's not something they're familiar with. I can share the budget with different users in my organization and have people bring their expertise to bear in the budgeting and planning process. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at altavistatech.com. Happy budgeting.